welcome to another Professor Messer CompTIA A Plus certification training course module. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to focus on electrostatic discharge. If we look at the CompTIA exam objectives taken from the CompTIA.org website, you'll see that Section 7.2 in that very first 22601 exam talks about identifying hazards associated with ESD, electrostatic discharge. And we're going to talk about why that's dangerous, and we're going to talk about things you can do to prevent electrostatic discharge. Let's talk about how we can prevent electrostatic discharge. Now ESD is this type of electricity known as static electricity. You've seen this when you shuffle your feet across a carpeted floor and touch a doorknob and you get a little shock. That's static electricity. And simply put, static electricity is electricity that doesn't move. You'll notice we don't use static electricity to power our computers. But it's still electricity. It could still be harmful to our computers. And there's really static electricity around a lot of different components all the time. It's really the discharge which actually causes the biggest problems. For those of you that still have the old school kind of CRT monitor, you'll notice that when you power that off, you hear the crackling noise of the static electricity as it finally starts discharging or starts fading away now that you've turned the monitor off. Well, that's always there when you're using the computer. Your challenge is making sure that you don't damage anything by that static electricity building up and then discharging into something else. Now, if we talk about silicon, that's really what most of these electronics are running on after all. That is the piece that's very sensitive to high voltages of any kind, not just static electricity. But it's very sensitive, and it's, it's something that can be damaged very easily if there is a shock. A, a discharge of static electricity across it. When we feel the static electricity, that's really about 3,500 volts of electricity that's going between your finger and the doorknob. Now, to damage an electronic component, notice the amount is about 100 volts or less. So by the time you've felt it, you've already caused problems and well beyond, potentially, with your electronic components. You can oftentimes damage your sensitive computer systems and not even feel it. So it's very important to use some of these techniques to not allow that static electricity to discharge and prevent that ESD. This is an anti-static wrist strap. This is a wrist strap that you can use to connect to your wrist and then connect the other end, that metal alligator clip in, to a metal component. Usually it's the chassis of the computer system that you happen to be working on. And what this does is equalizes the electrical potential between those two systems. You're essentially making sure that you're all working on the same level. That way there can't be a discharge from one system to another, from yourself to a piece of electronics. And it's got this nice coiled cord, so it's very easy to use. One thing you'll find if you are ever in a position of installing a very expensive piece of electronics, perhaps a, a card that goes into a router or goes into a switch, what you'll find is they'll include a wrist strap with that. Now make sure you use that. Don't be pulling all of these systems out and pl plugging them into pieces, other pieces of metal, thinking that you're not going to have a problem. Sometimes you can get away with it. But to be safe, you want to be sure to use those wrist straps. This is an anti-static pad. If you're laying out a lot of different electrical components, you're working on the top of a desk, and you want to be sure that you're not going to cause any electrostatic discharge to any of those components, you can use a pad like this. Notice the pad itself has a connector at the end of it, at the very edge. And on that connector, you'll see that that, that also has one of the same type of cords that you have if you're using a wrist strap. Think of this as having a very, very large wrist strap. This one happens to include everything that's on that pad. And at the same time, you also want to be grounded and have that connectivity for the, uh, the wrist strap as well. You want to use the pad and the wrist strap at the same time. But this way, you can lay everything out. And what you're laying your equipment on and your sensitive electronic components, that pad itself is now protected. You'll be sure you won't cause any ESD there. If you're in an environment where you're walking around quite a bit, in an area. Uh, computer operators are in this position where they're, they're installing tapes. They're moving around to different printers. They're looking at different screens. And they're, they're walking back and forth. You can't really have a wrist strap on at that time. You can only go so far with that. So this uh, extends it quite a bit because this is an entire floor mat that has that electrostatic discharging ground at the corner of it. And that way you can walk back and forth across the mat and feel relatively safe that what you're doing now is preventing that electrostatic 
static discharge from ever happening if you happen to touch another piece of electronics that's on that floor mat. So that can be helpful if there's a large area that you have to maintain. You'll see this marketed quite a bit. It's the anti-static spray. And uh, it is used most often on a carpet. Let's say you don't have the ability to put down one of those floor mats, but you'd still like to have some type of electrostatic control over a carpet that very often will become staticky. You'll walk across it and there's a static discharge. This can help eliminate some of that electrostatic discharge capability. Now, this is not really practical for high traffic areas because as you move back and forth, you're going to take some of that spray that that goes down along with it. It will dissipate over time depending on how much you're going to walk on that particular carpeted area. And that means you're going to have to constantly refresh it. So this is not a permanent solution. It's perhaps more that's one temporary, or it's in an area maybe under a desk where someone isn't going to be walking around a lot, but it's still something you'd like to have to help prevent electrostatic discharge. When you receive a piece of electronics, one of the things that you'll find is it comes in these anti-static bags. And this is a picture of one that I took in my lab where I had a piece of electronics. This happens to be an interface card that's inside of this bag. The, there's a lot of different kinds of anti-static bags. Some have padding on them. Some have different levels of anti-static shielding. And what you'll want to be sure that you keep your electronic components in the bags. I mentioned earlier about receiving some of those very expensive router or switch blades you'll find those are packaged very differently. It's a very different kind of anti-static bag, one that is even more resistant to ESD. It also has some padding in it. So obviously, the more valuable that piece of electronics, the better the bag is going to be that these electronics will go in. So make sure you save those afterwards. You never know when you're going to have to ship one of those cards back to the manufacturer, get replaced, move it to another location. So these bags are reusable. You can use them again and again. And it's nice to have a few stuck in the drawer if you ever need to transfer transport a piece of electronics from one place to another, a memory card, an interface card like this, put it in the bag, and that way as you transport it, it will be resistant to some of that ESD. One thing you'll find is that elect electrostatic discharge really occurs when there's very low humidity. It's very dry. So you'll see that some organizations will try to keep the humidity a little bit higher so that you can control the amount of electrostatic discharge that happens. Now, that's not a perfect solution. It's just something that helps. The problem is that if you're in an environment that has an air conditioning system, you're trying to keep the environment at a certain level, a high level of humidity, especially over 60% humidity, makes things a little bit uncomfortable. So perhaps not the most practical type of situation for a large environment or a place you're going to be in all the time. But if you're in an area where it's very humid, you'll find that there's not quite as much ESD. So what happens if you don't have any of the wrist straps, any of the floor mats, none of the sprays? What can you do if you happen to be in an environment where you need to work on a piece of electronics, but none of that is in front of you? Well, use your hand. Interestingly enough, if you take your hand and you touch a piece of the metal chassis before you touch anything else, it will help equalize some of that electrical potential between yourself and the components you happen to be working on. Uh, one of the things as you're touching this, I'll often touch the metal part of a power supply, but you want to be sure that if you're going to do that, that you unplug the power connection. I will read in a number of A-plus training manuals or other types of of technology magazines to keep this plugged in to be able to use the grounding system that's inherently available. But the problem is that the there's constant power on some of these newer computer systems that keep them in a standby state. So by pulling that out of the wall, you're going to be sure that you not only are able to ground yourself with some of the metal there, that way you won't electrocute yourself either. So doing that is always a good idea. Try not to touch the individual components of a, inter of a card, an interface card, or the components, the chips themselves, like on memory chips when you're inserting them into a system. Don't touch those components directly. Touch the edges of the card. Don't touch anything that looks metal, like the bottom of the card or the bottom of the memory chips where they're inserted. Just touch that green, green part around the edges. And that way you'll be sure that if there is some type of electrostatic discharge, you're discharging perhaps into something that won't be affected. Another term you're going to hear about is electromagnetic interference, or EMI. 
Now, I have it in this presentation to talk about EMI. This has nothing to do with electrostatic discharge. These two things are very different. One deals with electricity and static discharge. Another one deals with magnetic environments and places where there is some type of motor or some type of magnet that might be affected by this. And interestingly enough, you'll find that there's a number of magnets inside the systems we already use. Hard drives themselves have extremely powerful magnets in them. Older CRT displays have magnets in them. Anything that's a motor happens to be uh, uh, something that can provide or, or uh, give out electromagnetic interference. Now, EMI is a situation where it doesn't usually cause permanent damage unless it's something that's very powerful. You happen to put that magnet right next to what you're doing. So this is different than electrostatic discharge, which can really cause some big problems. You'll often see that this is caused by machinery or motors. In one environment I was working in, someone who had one of those old style CRT displays found that the display was flickering very heavily. They were finding that there was a lot of flicker and they couldn't get rid of it. No matter what they did with their software and their drivers, they replaced the monitor, still had a lot of flicker. And what we found is that they had a, a fluorescent light just above it. You turn the fluorescent light off and it stopped flickering. It was the electromagnetic interference from that fluorescent light that caused the problems on that particular screen. You'll find that you also have electrical rooms. We had another user whose station was situated just over the electrical room of the building. That electrical room was on the first floor. She was just above it on the second floor. And she oftentimes had some of those same types of problems with her monitor flickering. And we moved her to a different area, and those problems went away. So sometimes it's not completely obvious and not very visible where that might have come from. You'll see on a number of cables and cords that might be included with different systems, these, these filters that are placed in them, the cord will often be wrapped around them. And those are noise filters for this type of electromagnetic interference. They can also stop other types of radio frequency interference from getting into that as well. So some you'll often see that these filters are added in an effort to remove some of the interference that might be caused by electromagnetic sources. So let's review how we can prevent electrostatic discharge in your environments. One way is with a wrist strap. We can attach that to ourself and maybe also use a pad on top of our desktop. If we happen to be moving around a lot, we might want to take our electronic items and put them in a bag so that we're sure we're not going to create a problem there. And maybe have some spray on the floor or have an entire floor mat that is designed to prevent electrostatic discharge in these environments. We mentioned humidity control, even though it's something that's not entirely practical, it can help to prevent electrostatic discharge. And at the end of the day, if you have none of those things, use your hand. Make sure you ground yourself against a piece of metal before you touch anything else that you happen to be working on at that time. Also keep in mind, electrostatic discharge is something to remember, but electromagnetic interference can also cause problems with some of these pieces of technology that we use. If you'd like more information on electrostatic discharge, interestingly enough, there's an entire electrostatic discharge association. You can find them at esda.org. So you can see how prevalent this type of problem is not just in what we do, but other environments as well. For more A-plus certification training, some forums that we have set up, and certainly a lot more videos available to you, visit our website at freeaplus.com.